Okay, so now we're on six and seven. So uh, six and seven. So as I look at these, I have addition between my logarithms here. And that's gonna throw a little bit of a curveball, but realistically, it's really gonna add a very minimal amount of work to it. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So it is gonna require that you know some of your properties, okay, and how to solve them. So as I show the properties here, specifically, we're gonna to wanna to know the product property, although you should and will at some point know all of these pro properties, but that the product property uh, says that if I'm adding two um, logarithms with the same base here and here, it's really the same as if I take that logarithm with that same base and I just and I just multiply these parts together. And remember that these properties go either direction, so we can actually rewrite or write in almost whatever order we want. So as I look at six, I have log base ten, and I know it's base ten because the there's no base written there, so it's implied that the base is ten. And I have um, adding to it log base ten of x minus five, and that whole thing's equal to two. Let's go ahead and use our product property just to condense this down. So I have log base 10 of 2x times x minus 5. That's equal to 2. Okay, and so now what I want to do is I want to get rid of this logarithm. So I can just have my variables and I can reduce it down into a form that will help me solve. Um, so base log base 10 means I'm going to have to take 10 to the power of log base or base 10 of 2x times x minus 5. Okay, and we've kind of elaborated upon this that if I have log base 10, I'm going to take 10 to the power of all that because these will undo each other. Okay, so since these are undo each other, I'm left over with 2x times x minus 5. And that's equal to 100, and I'm getting 100 from 10 to the second power. Okay, and as I look at that, I can distribute. So I get 2x squared minus 10x is equal to 100. Okay, this problem has a variable with an exponent higher than 1, so it's going to require factoring. So I have to set it equal to 0 by subtracting 100. And the first step in factoring is find the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor is 2. So each of these parts can be divided by 2. So 2x divided by, or 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. Negative 10 divided by 2 is 5x. Negative 100 divided by 2 is 50. Okay. Now I have a trinomial with an a value 1. Okay. You can use that pink cheat sheet if you feel like you need it to factor still. Um, but a term of 1 th with 3 terms all together tells me I'm multiplying to negative 50 and adding to five, negative 5. And that is negative 10 and positive 5. Okay. The zero product property tells me that if I'm multiplying two numbers by each other and it's equal to 0, that means 1 or both of these numbers is 0. That means x, is equal, x minus 10 is equal to 0 or x plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay, so that means x is 10 and x is negative 5. Now, we've talked about this before, and it happens on occasion in upper-level math classes that, you know, a solution to this equation may or may not be a solution to parts up here, especially when you're taking things to powers, it changes signs, and there's all this other different stuff. So we need to be checking our work. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and get our calculator out, okay? And you're going to plug your variables into the, the very, very first part. So I have log base 10 of 2 times 10, okay? And then I need to add to it log base 10 of 10 minus 5. And when I hit enter, I'm hoping that it will equal... Uh, 2, which it does. Okay, so that tells me that 10 is a solution. All right, and so then now I need to go back through and I need to check negative 5. So I can say log base 10 of 2 times negative 5. 
plus log base 10, negative 5 minus 5. Okay. And non-real answer. So that's a pretty prime indicator that negative 5 is an extraneous solution. And we've dealt with extraneous solutions over the last two chapters, which means it's a solution to this equation here, or this equation, you know, really basically actually from here down. It's a solution to like this equation, but it's just not a solution to up here. Okay, so number seven. Okay, number seven is basically the same thing as six, but as I, I go through, uh, the only difference is that my base is six. Okay, and so when I do this, you know, I am adding, so that tells me that the the addition rule tells me that, you know, I'm multiplying these parts. So I'm going to reduce this down to say log base 6, 6x six times x minus 1 is going to be equal to 2. Okay, I have log base 6, so I have to have everything 6 to the power of log base 6 of 6x six times x minus 1 is equal to 6 squared. Okay, these are inverses of each other. Okay, we've kind of dealt with this, you know, right? That these are inverses, so they're gone, and now I have just 6x times x minus 1 is equal to 36. 6 squared is 36. Then I need to distribute 6x through my parentheses to get 6x squared minus 6x minus 36 is equal to 0. So I just went ahead and subtracted 36 because I knew I was going to have to do that anyway, so... Okay, so now rule of factoring tells me I need to divide out a 6 out of each of these parts. So this is x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, I have a 3 term, 1, 2, 3. And my a value here is 1. If there's nothing there, it's implied that it's a 1. So that means I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. So I'm going to get x minus 3 and x plus 2. Okay, these numbers multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. Okay, so zero product property tells me that x minus 3 is 0, so that means x is 3, and x plus 2 is 0, so that means x is negative 2. And we got to figure out if we have any extraneous solutions here. Okay, the only thing that, uh, that kind of is going to throw you through a loop on these kind of problems is that when I look at these, the, the base is 6, so it's tougher for me to put into the calculator. So I do have to use the change of base formula for each of these terms. So I'm just going to rewrite the problem with the change of base formula. Okay, so I know that the change of base formula would have me like log base 10 of 6x over log base 10 of 6 plus log base 10 of x minus 1 over log base 10 of 6, it should just be equal to 2. And I don't have to do any change of base formula here because I know this is just what I want it to be equal to. So the kind of unfortunate part here is that I am going to have to uh, use this to plug into the calculator. Okay, and it will just require some extra steps, but it will not be anything too rigorous. All right, so I'm going to do 3 first. So I'm going to have log uh, base 10 of 6 times 3. And I'm going to divide that by log base 10 of 6. Okay, and then I'm going to keep that in my calculator. And if I just go ahead and hit the plus sign right now, it will automatically pop up my previous answer. So now I'm not rounding. It's just using my previous answer, which is exactly this expression with x equal to 3. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. So now I'm going to have um, plus log base 10 of 3 minus 1, or divided by log base 10 of 6. And that is all equal to 2. Calculator did all of my checking work. I know that x equals to 3 is going to be an actual solution I have. Okay, so now I have to do the same thing for negative 2. All right, so let's go ahead and clear it out. So I'm going to go log base 10 of negative 2, or of 6 times negative 2, not that it matters. And I'm going to divide it by log base 10 of 6. Okay, 
And right already, just in that first expression, we're not going to get a real answer. We're going to get some sort of other imaginary unit. Um, and so this go ahead and tells me that this negative 2 is extraneous. It's not, you know, if this first part here is going to give me a non-real answer, it's this other part is going to give me a non-real answer. And there's no way adding those together are going to be 2. So I've already jumped ahead to find out that that is going to be my extraneous solution. Okay, so go ahead. Try 6 and 7 on your own, and, or F and G on your own, and then check it with my work when you are done. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've already done these problems, and you're just trying to check it. Okay, so um, uh, addition property tells me it's also, or the product property. So I can say log base 10. 5x times x minus 1 is equal to 2. And then, well, well, we can take 10 to each of these powers here. All right, and these are going to undo each other because 10 to the power of and log base 10 are inverses of each other. So now I have 5x times x minus 1 is equal to 100. Okay, I have to distribute 5x. So I'm going to go 5x squared minus 5x. I'm going to subtract 100 already as well. All right. I need to factor this. So I need to start with the greatest common factor. Um, pretty clearly a 5 can be divided out of every part. So I get x squared minus x minus 20. I have a trinomial, 1, 2, 3, um, with an a value of 1. Okay, and that means that I can look for numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to negative 1, which is negative 5, positive 4. Which means that the zero product property tells me that I'm going to have either x minus 5 is going to be 0 or x plus 4 is going to be equal to 0. So that means x is equal to 5 or, and, or x is equal to negative 4. All right, now I just have to go ahead and check my work. Okay, so I have log base 10 of 5 times 5 plus log base 10. 5 minus 1 and that's equal to 2 so 5 is a solution okay same thing but for negative 4 so log base 10 of 5 times negative 4 plus log base 10 of negative 4 minus 1 and I get non-real solutions so this is my extraneous solution Okay, last one. Okay, this one is the same thing, just different base, uh, but we can multiply. So this is going to be log base 4 of x times x plus 12. Multiplying doesn't matter, so I prefer this arrangement as to x plus 12 times x, not that it really matters. It's equal to 3. Log base 4 can un be undone by 4 to the power of. So 4 to the power of log base 4 times x times x plus 12 is equal to 4 to the third power. Okay, these are inverses, so they undo each other. And now I'm left with x times x plus 12 is equal to uh, 64. Uh, distribute my x to get x squared plus 12x minus 64. Went ahead and subtracted the 64 already, all in one step. And now I'm just looking for numbers that multiply to negative 64 and add to 12. Okay, and this may take you just a moment or two, but uh, upon a little bit of working through it, I found out that that's negative. 4 and positive 16. And the zero product property tells me that x plus 16 is going to be 0. And x minus 4 is going to be equal to 0. 
Okay. From this point on, all we need to do is check our work. Okay, and just like the previous one, we have to do a little bit of work with the change of base formula because it's a little difficult to plug in the, uh, the log base 4. So I want to write it out. So I'm going to say that log base 10 of x plus 12 over log base 10 of 4 plus log base 10 of x over log base 10 of 4 is all equal to 3. And so this is what we're going to plug in trying to get those parts. Okay, so now we have log base 10 of negative 16 plus 12 um, divided by log base 10 of 4. Okay, so that's not a real solution, so we have an extraneous solution already. Okay, it is possible to get multiple extraneous solutions, so you do want to go through and check your other answer. So we're going to have log base 10 log base 10 of 4 plus 12 divided by log base 10 of 4 okay is 2 plus log base 10 of 4 divided by log base 10 of 4 and we already know that's going to be 1 cuz is 1 is 1 and all together is 3 so this is my solution all righty folks Feel free to shoot me any questions. Otherwise, you can go back uh, to your homework and work on those. And that's the end of the chapter.